All right, guys, give me a thumbs up if y'all can hear me. Good. All right, great. We're going to start tonight the way we start everything at Brother Martin with prayer. So in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we love you and we thank you. We ask that you please give us the strength that we need to accept the graces that you provide so that we may grow closer in our service towards your will. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amator Krezu, Amator Kamarie, and Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Um, I'm going to try to get through as much information as fast as I can. If you need me to repeat something, by all means, just unmute yourself and ask the question or use the text box on the side. I feel like three months ago, none of us knew what Zoom were, and now we're all like experts in it. So uh, if you have any questions, then please just go ahead and either shoot them in the text box or just you know unmute yourself. And I believe at the bottom of your screen, you can do a little reaction emoji. And that can, I think one of them is actually raising hand. Just go ahead and do that. And then feel free to ask your question. Um, we're going to go ahead and kind of break this talk up into kind of three separate sections. One is going to be just general procedures, general things that we're going to be doing at camp. The other one is going to be the changes related specifically to the COVID guidelines. And then the third part is going to be questions and answers. Uh, I'll answer any and all questions that I can that you guys have and hopefully put y'all at ease and, uh, with anything you, you, may, you may be worried about. Um, so first, I want to thank y'all for going through the registration process and then the re-registration process and the date changes and then the selection changes. I, I know it's been tough on y'all. Uh, I know y'all are probably tired of seeing your email box filled up, but I do appreciate the responses that we've been getting. Um, and we really hope to put on the absolute best camp we can this summer. Um, one thing that you'll see as a theme is it's going to be a little different this year. Uh, but I'm, I'm hard pressed to find something that's not being a little different right now. So we're going to try to do as, as normal as we can. So let's just start with uh, some, general, uh, some general points. Camp schedule. Uh, all parents are going to be emailed uh, a Google Calendar. This is going to be inclusive for all four weeks. So whether or not your son is signed up for one week, all four weeks, or somewhere in between, you will receive a calendar of what we're doing every single week. Uh, every Friday before the week begins, you will receive a separate email of a detailed itinerary if your son is scheduled that week. For parents who had kids in camp last year, I, I think that this worked really well. Um, basically, I don't want to fill up your inbox with information for week two if your son's not coming until week four. I mean, you probably don't need to know that information. Um, so what we're going to do is on Fridays before the week is scheduled to begin, you will receive a detailed itinerary of where we're going, what time we're going, how long we're going to be there, and when we're coming back. You'll be knowing where we're eating lunch. You'll be knowing what we're doing. You will basically will know where your kid is at all times. Um, if you don't have a Gmail account, that's fine. It works even without the Gmail account, um, but it, it takes two seconds to set that up. Drop off and pick up procedures. So dropping off, we're gonna be dropping off in the mornings at the Conlin Gym. Your son will come in to, uh, to check in. Uh, we'll, I'll address this more in a few minutes, but you're not gonna be able to enter the building uh, when you're dropping your son off. Your son will then be escorted to his particular room and that will be based off his selection. The selection that he, choose, it, that he chose excuse me, is going to be representative of the group that he will be in for the remainder of the week. Pickups, I'll get into this more later too, but you're all gonna be given placards. It's gonna be card stock placards with your son's first initial last name. Each camper will be given two of these and I'll give those to the parents. And we ask that you please put these in your dash, on your dashboards of your car when you're coming to pick up your son. That way we'll have staff out there that can just look at the name on the car and then just radio into the, uh, into the building and we can send your son out there. Uh, so this will stop you from having to come in and wait. Um, and ironically, I think this is actually going to be a really uh, procedure that we use in the future, even without COVID, because I think it's going to work a lot smoother than in years past, where you came in and you had to wait for your son and your son was still playing. I feel like this might run a little smoother. As far as, uh, oh, sorry, the drop off and pickup location will be the same location uh, for both morning and afternoon. It will be on St. Aloysius Drive, and it's going to be at the Conlin Gymnasium entrance on St. Aloysius Drive. Now, that street is a one-way. Uh, it was a one-way last summer, but if you if you were with us two summers ago and you're with us again this summer, uh, the street has been designated a one-way, and that is you turn on to St. Aloysius Drive from Elysian Fields, that's the direction. So I believe that's going to be heading east. 
So it's a one way going east. Uh, notification of absences. Uh, we ask that you please notify us as early as possible if you know that your son's gonna be absent, whether it's a planned vacation or whether, or whether you wake up, your son wakes up not feeling well, whatever the issue, uh, please let us know that your son's not gonna be coming to school. That's kind of another reason for the detailed itinerary. Some of our field trips are in the morning, some of our field trips are in the afternoon. So you need to know, oh wow, the, the camp is leaving at 9 a.m. for a field trip. My son woke up sick, he's not gonna get in till 8, till 9.40. Well then, we're gonna have to make other arrangements. And your son can definitely join us in the afternoon, but we obviously won't be on campus. And so that's kind of the point of the detailed itinerary. So you know if, um, you know if you need to bring your son in or not, or you know if, where we are. Camp closure. Um, if camp needs to close for any reason, uh, we will notify you as soon as we can. Uh, the easiest, most efficient way to communicate with all you guys is via mass email. Um, I've been emailing uh, you guys, as you know, if you have not been receiving a lot of my emails, if you've been getting them forwarded to you through friends, I would ask that you please uh, shoot me an email directly letting me know that because all of the emails that I got were from the registration process and sometimes the email addresses get typed in wrong or whatnot, so I could be copying the incorrect email address. So if you're not getting my emails, feel free to shoot me an email. You're not gonna upset me. It's not aggravating. I just wanna make sure you guys are getting all the communication that we're sending out. Uh, let's see, aftercare and lunch. Uh, aftercare and lunch is still gonna be provided. Uh, aftercare and lunch is $25 for the week or $5 for the day. Some of you have already signed up for one or both. Uh, if you wait, if you're not signed up for lunch, let me give you a little scenario. If you're not signed up for lunch, but you wake up late one day and you're rushing to get your kid to camp and you don't have time to make them lunch, that's fine. You can get your son lunch by the day. It's $5. If you only want your son to have lunch two days out the week, that's fine. Just pay $5 when you drop them off or have your son give us the $5 and that's perfectly fine. We do ask that if you are, if you're planning ahead and you do know that he's going to get lunch for the whole week, let us know on Monday, that way our kitchen staff can better prepare. It's easy for them to add, you know, 10 or 20 campers a day, but if we start asking them to add 40, 50 campers lunches, then that does get a little challenging for them, and it does affect the way that they order the food. So if you can, let us know, but I do understand that things happen, so that's fine. And as far as aftercare goes, same thing. Um, just if you know at the beginning of the week, let us know, and that's perfectly fine, or you can just pay by the day. Uh, I might get in a little trouble for saying this, but I would actually encourage you to not pay for aftercare prior. Wait until you use it, right? So what I don't like is I don't like parents paying 25 bucks for aftercare, and then they're able to get their kid every day except one day. Well, they're paying 25 bucks for you know 30 minutes on a Thursday afternoon, so my recommendation is if you need aftercare, just pay for it the day of. Um, that way you're saving the money when you can get your son before 3.30. Camp is going to run from 9 to 3. We are going to open the doors and accept campers at 7.30 in the morning, and the camp will officially end at 3.30. At 3.30, that is when aftercare begins. So if you know you're not getting your son till 4 o'clock, well, then that would be an example of aftercare. Um, and, you know, I, I, I have no problem saying this out loud to all you guys. If you're gonna get there at 3.36, that's fine. That, that, in my book, that doesn't count as aftercare, okay? Um, we'll do whatever we can to work with you. Um, t-shirts. Uh, all campers will receive a t-shirt for every week that they're registered up to three weeks. And the t-shirts are $10 if you want to buy your son extra shirts. They are the same shirts as last year. So if your son still fits the shirt from last year, and he's getting two more shirts this year, you probably don't need to buy any extra. Um, I do feel like they hold up pretty well. Uh, they're a good quality shirt, uh, but if you do want some extra shirts, they will be on sale for $10. Uh, issues, okay, so this is actually, it's, it's not highlighted on my notes, but it, it's always the biggest thing for me with camp. I don't ever want you guys thinking that, oh, it's a small issue, it's minor, it doesn't matter, I'm not gonna bother Donnie with it. If something upset your son, or if something is upsetting you, if, if it's upsetting you, then it's upsetting me. Uh, we're gonna have enough challenges this summer to, to have a fun camp. We, we don't need you know little things to kind of go unaddressed and then they turn into big things. 
So please, please, please let me know whatever you need right away. If, if, if you think your son's not playing enough or if he's not involved enough, let me know. If he's complaining that he's not getting enough to eat at lunch, let me know. If, if a camper's picking on him, let me know. Um, please let me know any issues so I can resolve it as quickly as possible. The last thing I want is for one of our campers to have a negative experience uh, because of something that we can control. There's enough that we can't control. So, you know, try to, uh, I'm asking your help in letting me know anything that I can do to adjust anything that might be going on that makes your son not as happy as he could be. So again, our daily schedule, uh, we're gonna start accepting campers at 7.30 in the morning. From camp officially starts at 9 a.m. From 9 to noon, we will be doing our concentration. So whatever your son signed up for, STEM, art, track, basketball, football, whatever he signed up for, he'll be doing that uh, from 12 to noon. From noon to about 12.30, 12.45, we'll be having lunch. And then in the afternoon is typically when we go on field trips. Um, we'll talk about field trips in a few minutes, uh, but that's the basic schedule. Some days they are flipped. Some days we might go field tripping in the morning and we'll do the concentration in the afternoon. Some days we might eat lunch early at 11.30. But again, that's the point of the weekly email itineraries that you will be getting if your son is registered for that week. Swimming. Okay, so things change every day. Uh, I got a phone call today, Green Acres Country Club, where we go swimming every week. They're not allowing us to come. Um, we were not going to go anyway because of new guidelines we received today. Um, and I guess I can talk about this right now. Um, we are only going to places that are following the same guidelines and protocols that we are, are enforcing. One of the guidelines that we're doing is our, our grouping, right? We're maintaining static groups. So that means if we go to a place and we don't have that place to ourselves. We're not going there because we can't control the public that comes in. Um, laser tag, for example, we're gonna be going there at least twice. I may bump that up now, but we're going there. We have the whole place to ourselves, So it'll be clean when we get there and then it'll obviously be cleaned when we leave uh, and we can control everyone who goes into the building. Um, but for example, Green Acres, that's a shared facility that we use with other camps and Green Acre Country Club members we can't control that, so we can't go in there now. Um, like I said, there's gonna be a lot of challenges this summer. It's gonna be different, but we thought at Brother Martin, we thought it was the we were gonna do the best that we could to provide a camp in some capacity because like I said a couple weeks ago, kids need to be outside, kids need interaction, they need to play. That that's just as important to their health. Um, and so we want to do everything we can to provide that while also maintaining their safety. Um, additional weekly signups. If you're only signed up for one week right now and you want to see how it goes, you're not sure if your son's going to like it and you want to sign up for an extra week after, that's fine. Just let me know the week before that you want to sign up or just come in that Monday morning and you can sign up at the table. Med medicines and allergies. We have a number of kids that have uh, regimented medicine doses that have to be given at certain times. That's fine. Just let me know. Uh, and I will make sure that your son receives whatever he needs at the exact time that he needs it. Uh, if your son has asthma and you and you don't you know you don't you don't think that he'll always have his inhaler on him when he needs it, let me know. I'll hold on to it or I'll give it to his counselor, and that way his counselor will always be by him, especially with the with the groups that I'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, if your son is diabetic and, and has glucose powder or glucose tablets or insulin sticks, and you want me to hold on to that. That's fine as well. Let me know. Allergies. Basically, just communicate whatever your son's needs are, and I'll do everything I can to meet all of those needs. Okay. Um, so before I move on to the COVID-specific issues, do we have any, any questions? Hi, I do. Uh, my name is Ariane, and my son Dylan will be attending his first year there. Um, I wanted to know the camp uniform shirts that has to be worn every day so thank you so our camp uniform shirts we require them to be worn on field trip days other days we just recommend it so if they're staying on campus we recommend it but they don't have to they can wear whatever shirts that they want on field trip days it does help our staff identify our campers at a, at a, at a, at a just a glance and so we do require them to be worn on field trip days. 
And okay, so we would know weekly those days. Yes, ma'am, and, that, and I will have that information in the weekly itinerary. Whenever we go on a field trip, your son has to come in with okay. his shirt on, or at least have his shirt with him, and then he can put it on when he gets to, when he gets to camp. But Perfect. yes, ma'am, thank you for that. I forgot about that. Okay. Um, all right, so COVID stuff. I don't know what the official term is, but I've been calling it COVID stuff since it all started. Um, you guys will be getting um, uh, a, a, a document from the CDC uh, that, highlights, that highlights COVID-19, what you need to know about it, uh, symptoms, uh, how do you protect yourself. And I'm sharing that with you, one, so you have it, even though you, you probably all have stuff on your own already. But uh, all of our staff have been trained in the COVID symptoms, what to look for, uh, what to be aware of, how to mitigate any type of, of, of spread if it does get to campus. So we've been training our staff on that. And uh, I just want to let you know what we're doing with our staff. So I will share that with you. Another thing that you'll get is, uh, is an article from the CDC again on how to keep your kids healthy during, during the COVID-19. And, you know, I, I said this at the meeting last night, and I hope it came off the way I intended, and I'll try it again. I just, I want us to understand that I know we all have our, our opinions on, on one way or the other about what's going on right now. And I just ask that we respect each other and know that we're doing everything we can to provide the best camp for your son while maintaining his safety. So I, I get that you may not like all of the things that we need to do. I get that you may want us to do more, but just know that we're doing our best to kind of meet everyone right in the middle, provide the best camp we can for your children and keep it a safe environment. Um, so check in how it's gonna differ this year. On rainy days, you will enter the lobby of the building, but on normal clear days, uh, knock on wood, it doesn't rain the summer that much in the mornings, uh, the table will be outside. One of my staff members will be there. They will scan your son's forehead with an infrared thermometer. Uh, as long as your son has less than a 100, sorry, excuse me, less than a 100.5 fever. So, 100, higher than 100.4, we cannot accept, okay? So if we, if we take your, to your son's temperature and it is 100.5, we will, we will remeasure him, we'll, we'll retake the temperature just to make sure it wasn't an error in the, in the thermometer. But if it registers at 100.5 again, we are not allowed to admit him. Um, you also, uh, our staff has been trained to ask three basic questions to you when you're dropping your son off. Has he taken any fever reducing medication in the past 24 hours? So if the answer is no, great. Has he had any flu-like symptoms? If the answer is no, great. And has he had any respiratory issues? If it's like shortness of breath. If all of those are no, then we're good, you'll come in. Um, you are welcome to take your son's temperature in the morning if you want, just to get an idea about where he's at. However, we still need to take his temperature when he gets to school. And we will be recording these temperatures on the daily log uh, just to make sure we're, we're, we're doing what we need to do to make sure all the other campers are safe. When you come bring your son on the first day, whether that's in five days or four days on Monday, or whether you're not coming to the fourth week, you will get a bag. All, this year, all campers, in addition to receiving t-shirts, they're all receiving uh, Brother Martin bags, masks, and bottles. We will have the bags with y'all, your son's name on them. That way they don't get lost. We're gonna put your son's first initial and last name on the bag, okay? And in that bag will be however many shirts you're supposed to receive. It'll be the water bottle and it'll be the mask. I would imagine you guys might wanna wash the water bottles before they use them. So maybe on the very first day your son comes to camp, maybe have him bring his own water bottle. After that, I would encourage you just to bring the Brother Martin sports bottle that they'll be getting. As far as the mask, they're the, uh, I, I don't have mine with me because I'm, I'm home, but they're buffs. So what that is, it's that thing that slides all the way over your head and it kind of wraps around your neck and you can just pull it up over your mouth. They're very breathable, they're lightweight. Uh, it, it, it's, 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 it's relatively comfortable, as comfortable as masks can be. We are requiring that all kids have masks with them all day. We are working very closely with Tulane Sports Medicine Institute, and the guidance that we are receiving with them is, basically, if your son is doing an aerobic activity, he needs, he can have his mask off, okay? We don't wanna restrict airflow 
into and out of his lungs when he's doing an aerobic activity. So that's any type of sport that would involve running or something of an elevated heart rate. If he's doing an anaerobic activity, okay, an example of that would be like weightlifting, right? Most of the time, weightlifting is considered anaerobic. But in our case, STEM or, or arts, um, if we're watching a movie because of a rainy day, those situations, we are going to require the mask to be on if the camper is less than six feet from another camper. And we will be doing our best to implement the social distancing guidelines where the campers stay six feet or more apart from each other. But when they're all working on a STEM activity in the science lab, they're going to most probably be closer than six feet apart. Uh, so if that's the case, then they're going to have to have their masks on. Um, I, I, I know that this, is, this could pose a challenge. I know that we're having some issues already with some of our, our, our teams that are practicing uh, on campus. It, it's, it's going to take a lot of vigilance and a lot of observation. And don't worry, we're not going to get mad at any kid if we find that he has his mask off. Um, we'll just remind him. Um, and so we're going to do the best that we can to enforce. If you're doing anaerobic activity and you're less than six feet, we need you to have your mask on. If you want, if your son has a mask that, that he likes, that fits him really well and he wants to wear that mask, that is totally fine. He can wear his own mask. I do ask though that there's no, uh, I wanna say this as best as possible, make sure there's no statements on the mask, okay? It needs to be a solid color or multicolored, but we don't want words on it. If it's, a, if, it's a, if it's a faux pas print and they just have their label faux pas, that's totally fine. Labels are fine, but um, if you're unsure if we'll allow the mask, then please feel free to take a picture of it and email it to me, and, and I'll let you know if, it, if it's allowed or not. But basically, no, um, I, I don't want to, no political statement mask, uh, no, 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 no statement mask, okay? Uh, Florida Lees are perfectly fine, you know, Saints, LSU, all that kind of stuff is perfectly fine. So, all right, um, pickup is going to be uh, a little bit easier this year. So you drop, when you, let me finish drop off, excuse me. So when you drop your son off, you'll be asked those questions, we'll take his temperature. If everything's good, he is going to be escorted to his selection. So if you pick STEM on week one, we'll bring him to the science lab. If he picked a soccer for week one, then, then he'll go to his soccer, his soccer group. And then if you picked, uh, I think the other one's football for week one, then he'll go to the football group. We are gonna maintain these groups. Once the student, once the camper picks a group on Monday, he has to remain in that group for the entirety of the week. Come the, come the weekend and the following week, he can change groups again. But we have to maintain the staticness of the group for the entire week. And I know this is going to be difficult for those of you who have siblings, uh, who have multiple kids coming. And I'm, I'm very sorry, but we do need your siblings to select the same selection. So... I don't want to. I don't want to tell you how to how to do it with your with your kids, but you know maybe let one son pick one of the things one week and the other son pick the other one. Um, just the static groups would be would be compromised if we have Timmy going to soccer week one, but Johnny going to STEM week one, and they're separate during camp, but then they go home together, and then they're coming in contact with each other, obviously. So I know that's going to put a burden on some of you and. Some of your children will not be happy, and I do very much apologize for that. But it's just, and again, it's one of those things that we have to do to, to have camp this year. Uh, when it comes to carpooling, we pretty much have the same exact issue there. However, we are going to allow you to carpool, even if the campers are not in the same selection. We are just going to ask that you please monitor uh, the mask wearing whenever your son is with his friend. Okay, so please, even in the car, please make sure they have their mask on. Uh, that, that, that's the most we can allow. Um, so, we're right here. So that your son will go to the camp, go to his respective place, and then we'll, we'll have camp for the day. For pickup, uh, you are going to just drive up the same street you drove up for drop-off. You will display your name placard that has your son's name on it, I will have a staff member outside, he'll radio inside, we'll send your son outside, and then you never have to get out of your car, okay? Um, if you need to talk to me, obviously feel free to park and come on in and, and we can talk with whatever you need to talk about. Um, 
we are going to be following as a staff, we're gonna be following all safety guidelines as well. We will be wearing our masks. Uh, we will be disinfecting all commonly touched surfaces. We'll be washing our hands every two hours. And we will also have the campers wash their hands every two hours. I know this is gonna sound like, like, like daycare and preschool, but we're gonna have bathroom breaks every two hours. And that's going to help mitigate how many kids are leaving a group and coming back and touching the door handle and coming back. So every two hours, we'll wash your hands. And if the camper has to go to the bathroom, he will. Now, obviously, if there's an emergency and your son needs to go, we're not going to deny him use of the restroom just because he went 30 minutes ago. We'll, 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 we'll take care and we'll, we'll let him go to the bathroom. But just as a general procedure, we are going to be going to the bathroom every two hours, washing our hands. Uh, we talked about field trips. Um, all right, so I guess the big one here. What do you do if your son uh, does contact COVID? Uh, well, you need to contact me uh, immediately, as soon as you know. If your son contacts COVID, uh, he has to stay away from camp for 14 days. Uh, if you're signed up for two, let's just do a theoretical situation. If you're signed up for two weeks, and on the second day, your son contacts COVID, don't worry about the finances. We will fully reimburse you. I don't want the, I don't want the, the finance to be a factor in anything that we decide here. So. Uh, even for that matter, if you come with us for, if you're with us all three weeks and on the second day of the last week, your son, gets, your son can't come, we'll refund you the difference of the last week. So please don't let that be a concern. The primary concern is your son's safety, your son's health, and the rest of the campers health and safety. So if your son contacts COVID, you got to let me know. And he has to stay away for 14 days. Uh, upon completion of that 14 day period, he needs to be retested. Excuse me. He can be retested as early as the 10th day. Okay. It takes a few days for the test to come in. So let's say he contacts it on the 1st. Then on the 10th, go get him retested. If he's cleared, he can return to us on the 14th. And so that would be the 14 days. All right. If your son comes into contact with someone that tested positive, your son needs to get tested before we can bring, before we can allow him back in. Okay, your son has to come with a certification with a testing procedure says that he tested negative. One more delineation. Your son comes in contact with someone and that someone came in contact with someone who did test positive. Your son's fine. We will just monitor his symptoms. We will still let him in. However, if that friend ends up testing positive, then we do need your son to go ahead and be tested. And upon a negative completion, we will allow him back in camp. I know that's a lot, okay? And I'm going to have all that down in writing for you guys, so you don't have to worry about the ifs and the whens and, and all the ins and outs. We'll have it all down in writing. Um, so, you, so, you, so you are aware of what needs to happen if something should happen. Uh, I do hope that we don't have any of that, but I think it might be a little naive to think that this camp will be immune. Um, that's why we're doing all of the other things that we are implementing to protect the rest of the camp. We're going to be doing the groups, the contact tracing groups. Um, and the reason why we're doing that is, is not so it doesn't spread throughout the camp, but it's so if Timmy is doing STEM and he's, he's STEM A and he tests positive, then we only need to shut down STEM A group. The rest of the camp can continue on as planned assuming there's no other issues. Um, if we didn't do that, then if one camper tested positive, then we'd have to shut the whole camp down. So that's why I know it's a burden to have your, your two sons do the same sport um, or same selection, but that allows us the opportunity to where if something happens, we don't have to shut the camp down for the rest of, of the campers. Um, let me make sure. Okay, so we have on the schedule to go to Wood Lake. This is one of our field trips. Uh, I have not yet received confirmation that we will be the only group there. If that's the case, we can't go, right? Unless we are the only group there at our time, we can't go. Uh, so again, that's why I said this year's camp is going to look a lot different. Um, you know, last year we went on two to three field trips a week. We can't do that this year. Um, we're going to do the best that we can to let the kids still have a great time. Um, when it comes to transportation, we're going to be following all guidance when it comes to busing. Uh, but basically what it's going to come down to is a, a camper every other seat, every other row. So that means in a bus where we could normally fit 50, we can now only fit 25. 
And so that means more bus driving, but, but if that's what we need to do, then that's what we need to do. Um, I'm gonna share my screen with you guys for a second. Wait, I'm gonna share this one, there we go. I think this might be the one, yes, okay. So this is a consent form. Just give me a little, give me a little head shake if you guys can see the consent form. Okay, good. So I'm gonna email this consent form to you. And it basically is you giving your son consent to come to our camp. And it, uh, it, it states, among other things, I'm sure there's a few lawyers in the crowd that you guys can tell me better what it says, but basically what it's saying is, you know that there does stand a risk to your son that he comes to camp that he might be exposed to COVID and might contract COVID. Um, I think we all know that, you know, going out anywhere right now, we all assume that risk, but we do have to have this signed hard copy uh, in our possession before we can allow your son to come to camp. Uh, most of what I've outlined tonight is in this document, okay? Um, and this will be updated to reflect the most recent changes, uh, but you will also get this document. And this is basically all of the COVID implementations that I've been talking about that we will go through this year and that I've gone over tonight. Um, so you'll get both of those you will also get access to a shared Google Calendar, and you will receive emails on respective weeks based on the week that your son is signed up. Um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. Okay, um, are, there any, are there any questions, guys? All right, um, yes, sir? So you do um, get the you get the bag with the t-shirt and the bottle the first day when we drop them off. You'll give it to them that day. That is correct. Yes, sir. And what I'm encouraging is that the parents basically take the bag, all of the shirts but one of them, and the water bottle home, leave the mask in one shirt, let the kid wear that for the day, um, and wear the mask for the day. And then the following day, he can obviously bring that water bottle back because it's a nice water bottle, but it, it, it's a plastic water bottle. So it's, it's going to have a little bit of a scent to it, you know, first time it's being used. So, I, you know, I would probably give it a good wash before I start filling it up with some water. Um, thank you, actually. That brings me up to another point I forgot to mention about the daily procedures. So when you send your son to camp, theoretically, he's going to have, he's going to have full, uh, a full water bottle, right? Well, he's probably going to need to refill that water bottle throughout the day. So the kids will be able to refill the water bottles, but we were going to refill it for them. So I'm gonna have a staffer manning a Gatorade uh, water dispenser, and the camper will basically just unscrew his own bottle, hold his own water bottle under the, the spigot, and then a staffer will be the one dispensing the water. That way, every camper is not touching this water, this water cooler and every other camper is exposed to it. Uh, so I have a question for here. Will the kids stay in groups on the field trip? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the kids are going to be remaining in their groups for the entirety of the week. Uh, and so that's kind of important because uh, last year we allowed students, uh, excuse me, students, I'm, I'm teaching uh, credit recovery, so I have my mind on that. But uh, we allowed campers to switch back and forth between the different groups. To be very honest, it was normally based on where their friends were, right? They didn't know that their friends signed up for football and now they want to do football. And we were able to accommodate that. I'm sorry, we cannot accommodate that this year. Um, but if you tell me on Monday, we can put your son in that group for the week. But I can't have you coming to me on Tuesday and says, oh, he really wants baseball. So they're going to be going on their field trips in those same groups, okay, in those same groups. Um, so same color, let's see. Uh, the colors, the, the shirts for this year, Ms. Holland, the shirts for this year are the same shirts as last year. They're gray with Brother Martin on the front and Crusader Camp right underneath. Uh, they're the same exact shirt this year. Um, and, uh, and again, the first day, he can wear whatever shirt he wants because we're not going on a field trip the first day. Um, so if you just want to take all three or, or all four of your shirts home, whatever it is, and wash them, that, that, that's obviously fine. I would also encourage you to wash the shirts before. They are clean, but again, they're, they're, they're brand new, never been, never been worn, so they may have a little, little bit of residue on them. Um, set menu for lunch, thank you. Uh, so the menu is set. They are not, students, campers are not gonna be allowed to select what they want to eat each day. Our kids, kitchen staff is doing all the same guidelines uh, 
that all the recommendations that they're following and uh, the lunches will be boxed up and I will have staffers of my camp distribute the lunches outside. So the kids will be eating lunch outside. Uh, that way they can, it, typically if you're outside, you don't have to have your mask on. So this kind of allows them a little bit break with the mask. Um, the, the menu will be set and it will be emailed to you in that weekly itinerary. You will know what your son is having for lunch every day of that week. Um, we, we have, it's everything from hamburgers, hot dogs, grilled chicken sandwiches, nachos. Uh, we do give peanut butter and jelly sandwiches sometimes, pending at allergic reactions. Uh, pizza, chicken nuggets. Our kitchen staff does a good job giving the kids the food that they kind of like. And, and Miss Tina uh, LeBeau, she has a really good idea about what kids, what kids like to eat, how much they eat, and whatnot. Uh, and actually, thank you for that question. Every Friday, uh, I've worked out a deal with Canes. Every Friday, Canes will be coming to campus and giving lunch to the kids. It costs the same as a regular lunch, okay? So if you want your son to bring lunch Monday through Thursday, but you want him to have canes on Friday, that's fine. Just have him bring $5 on Friday and he'll be signed up for canes. Um, and uh, again, uh, uh, for, for breast uh anything that your son is allergic to, just let us know and we'll make sure that he, A, doesn't get that for lunch and B, yeah. Uh, is not really exposed to anyone around him who does have that. How many kids are in each group? The, each, the, it's going to be about 20. And I say 20 because we can only have 25 people in a group. But I obviously am going to have three to four staffers in each group. So that means we can only have about 20 campers in each group. Uh, and Bresti, it is not too late to change the activities. Um, if you're carpooling and you want them all to be in the same group, that's perfectly fine. Just let me know that Monday morning that you come to camp and we'll make sure we send him to the right group. Uh, thank you. Uh, excuse me for the name, but Saruti. Um, if so if a child, if your child needs to be picked up early, um, I will give you my cell phone number. I will also give you the school phone number and I'll give you my email. Between those three communications, you will be able to get in contact with me. But basically, just email, call, or let us know somehow, and uh, excuse me, let us know by calling or emailing, and we will arrange a pickup for one of our staffers to walk your son to the same doors that you would pick him up normally. We would just bring him early to you. So the, the pickup procedure for early pickup is going to be the same as a normal pickup. Camp takes in, uh, Tori's parent, camp takes in at 7.30. Now, I, 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 do, I do want to kind of uh, warn you guys, um, our camp activities are going to start at 9, from 9 to 12. That's kind of the, the range. Um, so the earlier a kid gets there, the more time, unfortunately, he might be sitting. Now, our staff is, is, is already planning a great, great uh, activities for your kids. Um, but it's still, it's not going to be like before when they got here at eight, they could play basketball, you know, for 40 minutes before we start the camp. They can't do that this, this time unless they are in that particular sport. Um, if you're walking over, uh, Ms. 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 Ermler, uh, if you're walking over, that's, that's fine. Uh, just, I would ask you to walk into the same way, to the same common gymnasium entrance on Stephen Gerard, excuse me, St. Aloysius Drive, and you would go through the same procedures. Uh, if dropping off early comes down to breakfast, um, that's a very good question. Um, I don't see an issue with that at all. If you want your son to have breakfast in the morning, that's perfectly fine. Um, that's perfectly fine. Uh, also on Fridays, uh, we'll have snowballs. Uh, I believe uh, Bubby's snowballs, I think that's what it is, or maybe it's Mark snowballs, but it's a snowball stand right up the Elysian Fields. He's going to bring his cart to campus every Friday and sell snowballs to the kid who wants them. It's three dollars, um, and the kids seem to really, really like them last year. So, all right, thank you guys for the questions. Uh, any any other questions before we head out and have dinner and put the kiddos to bed? All right. Well, again, guys, I thank y'all very, very much, and I'm looking forward to a great camp. If you have any questions, big or small, please let me know. Email me. Do not think that you're aggravating me. Anything I can do to make this camp better for your sons and 
better for you because I'm sure you're looking to get your kids out and give them some activity, please just let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to help. And uh, I look forward to seeing all you guys on Monday. Thank y'all. Y'all have a great night.